This is your standard bread and butter MLOps setup. In this case, I'm using a scheduler with 20 steps and a CFG scale of nine to prompt for a high quality color photo of a parrot with a negative prompt of ugly, mangled, bad, disfigured, low detail and cheap. I'm using Stable Diffusion 2.1 and I was thinking, the text encoder generates a vector, a vector with those 87,884 dimensions. And we could think of this vector as a point in two dimensional space. Let's just assume we forget about these 87,000 blah other dimensions. And this simple point that is all the embeddings would generate an image, in this case of a parrot. Now what happens if I randomly sample new points closely around the center point that gives us this parrot and turn those into images? To do so, I'll employ the help of a point wrangle, which I'll wire in after the stable diffusion text encoder. And in our point wrangle, for each of our points, which stores one dimension of our conditional and unconditional embeddings, I want to create a random number and add this to the value. And for that, I might need a seed. So let's call this int seed and use a slider to dial that in. Let's create that slider. Here it is. And also let's create an amplitude slider, which drives how far away from the center point we want to randomly walk. Let's call this amp for amplitude and use a float slider, which we just call amp and also create down here. Let's just use the most creative seed there is on the planet and a really small value in our amplitude. Now let's generate two random numbers, one for the conditional, one for the unconditional embeddings. So let's call this float unconned underscore rand. And let's use the rand function, which we're going to initialize using our current point number plus the seed. Let's copy and paste this. And let's call this one conrand for conditional rand. And in this case, maybe we should add a second seed or let's just add a number that we maybe want to make a bit bigger. Now all we have to do is take our unconditional embeddings and add to it the unconrand, copy and paste this and modify it. So we do the same thing with our conditional embedding like this. All right, new flag on there. That seems to have worked. Let's see what Stable Diffusion spits out. Well, let's check what we're doing here and where we might have gone off script or wrong. Yeah. And of course, what I'm doing here is I'm not taking into account the amplitude here. So let's just multiply it back here. And now let's retry. And yes, that is more like what I was expecting. All right, if we veer off further from our original center point, the parrot, we are slowly verging away from that beautiful parrot photo. And once we're in this territory here, the images get really weird and wonky. So what I might want to do is leave this at 0.1 and instead just animate the seed with a brief expression like this. And let's see what that spits out. Again, I want to attach a cache down here after the image decoder, maybe increase the cache size a bit. And then let's just run this for 50 or so frames. And for me, that's a bit boring. So instead of only animating or moving the seed here, let's also randomly choose the amplitude like this and maybe remap this so it's not between zero and one, but between zero and 0 0.25. And again, let's run this. And admittedly, most of those images are kind of what you'd expect, kind of boring. So you have to tweak those parameters within which you explore the embedding space, the latent space of these prompts. Just to give you an example of what lives there, I run a few experiments. And while this is still a rather normal parrot, we quickly veer into the uncanny. However, also there are way more beautiful images hidden around this prompt, but also you get this and this. And if you veer off too far from our center point, you slowly move into territory where we are only getting this beautiful, colorful noise. So have fun playing around with the text embeddings. We are truly, honestly intrigued to see what you find in latent space and embedding space. So if you find something intriguing, beautiful, or plainly curious, just let us know. And if you want to get in touch, not only with us, but with other MLOps users, and maybe even want to participate in the development and trajectory of this toolkit, you might want to join our Discord server, to which you'll find a link on our GitHub. And with that, I hope you're having fun and goodbye.